and welcome back to another Minimator tutorial video. Today I'm going to go over how to animate doors and trap doors. Now, it's kind of funny because I took the time, made this wonderful animation here you'll see, uh, of all these different ways to animate the doors, and then I was going and talking to David. I was like, hey, I made this animation on doing doors. He's just like, oh, well, did you use the rotation point option? I was like, no, it's the rotation point option. He's just like, oh. So he showed it to me, and I have since remade a uh, the tutorial in a very it, in a very in a faster way. So I guess thanks to David for pointing that out to me before I uploaded the slow way. Here is the fast way. So let's just slow this down. You can see the doors opening and closing. Now technically in Minecraft these are not how the doors work. Um, if you want to make it work like that you just want to go here, hit the transition, change that to instant, change that to instant, change that to instant, and one more to instant, and now we press play. It's now the normal open close um, feature that you would get on Minecraft doors. Anyway, let's go ahead and change, actually we'll just leave those how they are. Now a couple things that I want to point out before I move on and show you how to do this is parenting objects. I know I've gone over it before on how to do it, but today I want to just make a quick note on why it's important to do so. So say for some reason this igloo thing is actually a giant starship and it's going to be taking off into space. Um, we actually need to show it. Scenery 1 so I can see it on the timeline. Now say I've animated out this whole fight scene and things and I'm like you know what I want to have the scenery moving from left to right across so it looks like we're moving like a flying ship, a railroad car or whatever whatever have you um, is going to be moving. If I go ahead and move this You'll notice the door comes with it, but the trap door doesn't. And that's because I have parented the door to the scenery. Meaning, if I press play here, no matter where the scenery is located, the door will act normal and in its same position. However, the trap door down here that we can't see, see I move the scenery all the way down there, the trap door is still doing its thing, but it's not connected to the ground where it looked like it was. Um, so that's just kind of a little tip. If you're going to have moving scenery or anything moving, make sure you use the parent feature so that things come with it. That includes uh, characters, items, doors, objects, blocks like this. All right, so now let's get to the animating part. Let's go ahead and add a door. Uh, block. Now up here, remember you can quick type something, door, select wooden door, and we'll name this door 2. Okay. Now I'm not going to parent this one just because I'm not planning on moving the scenery. And now let's look down here at this wonderful box here. Now I know in a past video I thought this was a quick feature to move the video uh, to move the object around, but it's actually changing the rotation point. So for example, let me try and explain this. If, let's move this up so we can see it, um, you'll notice the rotation point, you know, like where all these lines intersect right here in the middle, is not on the door. So if I pull up this rotation thing, when I'm rotating it, the door rotates around this center point. So we can actually move that center point so that when we rotate it, we can actually have it rotate along the back of this door, thus making it a lot easier to animate the door. So I've messed around with it, and you do have the X, Y, the X, Z, and the Y, Z graphs that you're all that you're going to have to change. Um, and just a way to check where you're actually moving it is, let's say I move this. Now it looks like it's moving the door, but it's actually moving the rotation point. So I'm going to move this up to the top right. Now, if I go ahead and jump back to where you can see the rotation thing, you can now see the rotation point is hugged against the door here instead of being out and down. So we actually need to keep moving the rotation point so that it's on the edge of the door over here. Um, now this is just kind of a trial and error so far for me. 
but you can kind of tell because if I'm if you see the more door moving left that means the rotation point that's right here the door is actually moving to this end of the rotation point so think of the door is moving but the rotation point is not you're not moving the rotation point but you're moving the door around the rotation point so if I go ahead and move this one all the way down to the end bring it back up you can now see the rotation point is now on the end of the door and now if I were to use the blue slider and move it it rotates like a normal door would on a hinge so this is going to make it a lot easier as far as making the door turn um, so let's go ahead and put her in place so make sure you change the rotation point before you actually set it in where you want to go because it is going to be moving the door around so let's move it there let's move it back in now it is kind of a tight squeeze and I don't have it lined up just right alright that's pretty close um, so now I have that, that's the first keyframe if I make this second one just go ahead and change the Z to 90 degrees we can actually, let's make this door open and let's change it to a negative 90. Now you see it kind of sucked into the wall and that's because the rotating point is on this left hinge instead of the right hinge so if we just want to go ahead and change that, let's pull this door out and let's move it. So we're going to go back to the library. This is where you're editing this. You're going to make sure you have door selected. We're going to go to the XZ and we're going to move it all the way to the corner. So it's 0, 16, 16. Now let's pull up our rotation thing and you can now see it rotates on this back part of the door instead of the front part of the door right here. So let's move it back in. And let's check this next frame. And I can see it didn't get sucked into the wall. It did. Actually, no, it didn't. It just it turned perfectly on this hinge. And so now, if I just want to take this door, hold control to copy, pull it out here, turn it on. You can now see it opens like a normal door would. Works out very nicely. Um, now like I said if you want to change it so that it's like a normal Minecraft door just go ahead come in here to transitions hit instant oops don't add a keyframe click that one hit instant press play and now you get the clicky 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 door movement now let's go ahead and do a trap door real quick let's go ahead and add another block um, trap door Okay, now let's move it somewhat to where we want it, although we're not going to move it exactly to where we want it because we are going to be changing the rotation points. We're just going to go ahead and go jump to camera. Uh, let's move it up and over so we can see what we're doing. So let's look at the rotation point on this one. This one looks like it's perfectly, well it's not perfectly centered, it's centered on the underside of the trapdoor. So if I were to rotate this, it rotates around that spot and you can see that red line that's the line it's rotating around so what we want to do um, is we want to move one of these lines so they're on the edge it doesn't always have to be the same line it can be any of these lines so for example the red line I would want to move out to this edge if I was going to be rotating with the yellow line I'd want to move it out to this edge or if I was going to rotate with the blue line um, that would be a little bit weird for a trap door, but I could still do it and move it out to that edge. So let's go ahead and reset these all to zero. And let's move our orientation. We actually want to move, and if you're not sure which one you want to move, I actually want to move the x-axis. That's the yellow line, so I'm going to work with the x-axis. So let's go back here, let's select our block, Oop. and let's go down here. Now this is like the normal thing, you can um, click and drag it around so you can see it better. Use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Um, so let's change this orientation. Now, like I said, this is a little bit of a trial and error. Um, let's try this. Let's take a look. Uh, actually, first try. So now you can see the yellow line is on the back here, so when I swivel this on the yellow axis, it swivels around that line. Very handy. So let's go ahead, set that to zero and let's move it into place. Now we want to rotate this um, negative 180 degrees. 
Okay, let's use the red line. Drag it back. Bring her down. Let's take the camera down. Bring it to the edge. All right, so now we just add a keyframe here. Let's take the X one, set it to 90. Take this, control drag for the closing, and we're done. There you go. Very fluid, very smooth, no jumpy things. It's just your average door opening and closing. And as you can see on this one, if I want to make it the instant open, shut and snapping motion, just change the transitions to instant. Um, pretty easy. So I guess I need to thank David for pointing that out to me. Um, this does make the tutorial a lot quicker and a lot easier to animate your doors and move them around. So just mess around with the rotation point. You can always check to see where you've moved it. Once you've moved it, click on the keyframe. Um, which one do we have selected? Over here. And just look at where the lines are moving. Um, it's it, you do get used to it. I can do this now pretty quick, but at first I was kind of just moving that thing blindly. So that is the door tutorial, how to open, how to make it snapping, trap doors, normal doors. Iron door would work the exact same way. No big deal. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching guys. This is Ski Dude. If you need another custom tutorial, if you can just figure something out, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. I know a lot of you are still having render issues. David is looking into it. It seems it might be a graphic card issue. I'm not quite sure at this point, but just keep trying. Usually, if you do get some weird errors, just restart your computer and run it again, and that usually fixes it. Um, but yeah, if you need help animating anything else, let me know, and I will try to figure it out for you and put up a tutorial. Thanks for watching, subscribing, commenting, and supporting my channel. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.